Hello, hello, hello. Oh. Sorry about the uh, the second time change that I've had to do, uh, but I realized yesterday that I cannot just magically appear f or disappear from one place and appear at home. Uh, and I had an appointment for my daughter that I had to book back in April. Uh, so, yes, there was absolutely no changing that appointment. So hopefully everyone has prepared their, their souls and said prayers and well wishes and stuff because today we are going to do the French knot, which a lot of people are usually anxious about or they're just nervous and feel like they can't do it. But I promise you, French knot is good. Hi, Bridget, over on YouTube. Um, I promise you they're good. I promise you that it just takes a little bit of practice and you don't have to do it fast, um, but it will be all okay. So I promise. And there are quite a few French knots. I, I realize that now <laughs> there was kind of no getting around it when it comes to the flowers, the, the little white flowers that we've already done, so the middles. Because in my opinion, a French knot is the best option for the inside of a flower like that. Uh, four strands. I'm just getting my floss ready. And we're not gonna we're not gonna wait around too long for people to join in. Because it doesn't usually lead to any anyone else. People are usually kinda like, oh hi, glory of hope. Uh, over on Instagram. So if you're working with two different size needles like I am, I'm going to be using my larger needle today. Um, but you can do it with either one. It's just that the ones that I have, the, the eye of my thinner needle is not as slick. So the gonna focus it's it's flat like this so it's it's barely got any bubble if that makes sense hopefully that makes sense i don't know how to describe it but it just it slides the floss off much easier so um but both would work fine all right i'm gonna all right i was doing some recording yesterday after the session so I'm going to move my phone, getting my, ugh, this one, it, it only stays down if my phone's in it, so let's just move my phone. Alright, so hopefully you're all excited, we're almost done, I'm going to get my chat up uh, on my screen. All right, so for this one, we're going to do the middle of the flowers first. And I'm gonna try and angle that a little differently. So that everyone can kind of see a bit closer. Oh, that moved it. Do, 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 do. All right, so we're going to do the middle of these flowers first and then we'll get to the four like that are actually just French knots as the flower. So we want our yellow color or I guess if you're doing if you're doing a different color um, option, uh, you can do a brown like a dark brown as the the stamen part. Um, so that's just an option for you as well. I'm doing the same yellow as what I did the B. Just do as a tidbit. So we want 
four strands, four strands, yeah, four strands. So I've pulled out two and I'm actually going to do that like reverse loop start that I've talked about. So I'm just going to thread two on my needle. I'm going to bring both of the ends together. The needle goes in the center then of the, the thread. And then I'm going to do my quilt is not just off screen because there's four strands. I'm just wrapping it around three times. All right, and I've got the teensy little tail bit that I'm going to snip off. And then let's get started. All right, are you ready, everybody? I promise you, I promise you, French knots are not scary. Uh, which one? We're going to work on this one first. So I might move my phone in. It's about as close as I can get Instagram. You can see the, the lovely background there. All right. So we're going to come up not where we want the French knot. So I'm coming up right next. Oh, yeah, this is a squeaky needle, isn't it? Coming up right next to the, um, the previous stitches that we've done. I'm going to wrap around. Let me see what I, how many times I did it here. We're going to wrap around two times. So we're taking our needle, we're holding the thread in the other in our other hand. We're going to go underneath and wrap. That's one and then two times. We're not going to let go with what is my left hand, which is usually your non-dominant hand. We're going to turn our needle so that it's pointing back towards where the floss, where the fabric is. And we're going to go in slightly off where we came out before. Do not let go here. We're going to push in at the same time I'm pulling so that the loops that I've done around the needle are now flush with the fabric. I'm going to keep pushing and not let go here. Keep holding it on while you pull it through and then once you're almost at the end you can let go. And ta-da! That's a French knot! How easy is that? And how cute is it? I promise, like I said, they're so easy and I will do this whole flower nice and slow. I'm just, there's so much floss behind the work that I'm trying to find a place to come up. So the amount of times that you wrap around your work is how big the knot is going to be. So you can do one wrap around, you can do three wrap arounds. You don't want to do too many for this piece in particular. But like you could wrap around 20 times and have this crazy looking knot if you wanted to. So for this one, because there's a tiny gap that I've left here, I'm just going to wrap around once. So I'll do that slowly, sorry. So holding it in my left hand, needle in my right hand, I'm going to go under, wrap it over. So that's one wrap and that's what I'm going to do for this one. So I point it now at the fabric. Do not let go with my left hand. Poke it in to my fabric, pull the floss so that it's now, the knot is now flush with the fabric, push it in, force it if you have to, do not let go with that left hand, pull it through, and that's it. I'm going to do one more little knot on this flower in particular, so again really slow. I've got my needle in my right hand, floss in my left. I'm going to wrap one time, two times. So we've got two wraps around. I'm now going to point it and not go in where I came up before, but just slightly off. We want to have some fabric between the two points that the floss um, goes through the fabric. I've poked my needle into the fabric. I've now pulled my floss so that the knot is flush against the fabric. You, with that moment mo motion, you are telling the floss where the knot is going to sit. Don't let go with your left hand until you're almost pulled all the way through. And I'm not happy with how that sat. So what I'm going to do is one more little knot. I know I just said I was going to do three, but I'm going to do one more with just one wrap to fill in that gap a little bit. So 
left hand holding floss, right hand holding needle. We're going to go one wrap, point it where you want the knot to go. So I'm going to try and get it in that little gap that I've made. Pull the floss tight, not, not too tight that you can't push your needle through, but tight that you've now like positioned where the knot is going to sit. Push it through. I don't have a thimble, so <clears throat> I use my nails sometimes. Plus you can also just like use your bobbin so you're not sticking a needle into your skin. And pull it through and that's twisted real bad. There we go. That's better. And that <clears throat> is a French knot. Well, that's four French knots in two different sizes. So you can just kind of see the difference in sizes. That's the one wrap around and that one there is two wraps around. So there is twice as much thread on a on two wraps around. Just like if you wrap around three times, then there'll be three times as much if you wrap it around. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna flip it over and cut off my floss so that I'm not carrying it across the back. Again, as I've said over the past few days, if you want to carry a thread along the back, if you don't mind that, by all means, I'm just used to not doing it. Because that's, oh, you can't see. I'll show you guys at the end what my back looks like. Just remind me if anyone's um, still on at the end of today's session. So I'm going to go a little bit faster unless someone says otherwise because I do want to make sure that I show every stitch that I do but I don't want to be here for two hours <laughs> all right so this one I'm gonna come up where I don't necessarily want the um, the not to be but in roughly the same location so this one I'm gonna do two wraps around I'm just gonna move my phone closer so hopefully Instagram can see a bit better. There we go. Okay. I mean, I can't really see what I'm doing, but that's not important. Floss in left hand, needle in right hand. I'm going to do two wraps. So that's one. That's two. I'm then going to hold onto this with my left hand, turn the needle and poke it in slightly off where I came up before and where I want the knot to be. I've now pulled the floss so that I've positioned the knot exactly where I want it to sit and then push my squeaky needle through all the way. I'm only going to do two because that actually looks really cute just with one. So I'm going to do a second one with two wraps around. So one two, turn it, poke it in where I want the knot, pull the thread so that the knot is sitting against the fabric. And, oh my goodness. I must be going into a knot of floss at the back. And if you've, you notice that I've got like a little bit of a loop, that's just because of how my thread is sitting on my needle. So I can just tug it and that fixes it by itself. I'm going to leave that one like that. Hi, Lily Gold. Um, I see that you've requested to be in the video. I'm actually not going to do that um, just because it's a stitch along. Uh, but if you've got any questions or anything like that, let me know and um, I'm happy to answer them. Which is a reminder, actually, I meant to ask. If anyone's interested in um, me doing like a live Q&A over on Instagram, just because I can add people to a chat like that, let me know if that's yeah if that's something that people are interested in. Sorry, it, 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 it. there we go. I probably do that like roughly the same time as what this is during the week. Okay, 
We're going to do the next flower. What did I do on this one? So I've done it. I've got a bigger hole on this one for French knots. So I'm going to do a couple, but I'm going to just do one, one wrap around French knots. So one wrap, poke it in, pull the floss, and uh, shove the needle in. You tell it who's boss. So you can see the difference. You see how small that is compared to like just one of those. That's that's one French that's a one wraparound French knot and that's one of the two wraparound French knots there. And obviously depending on how many strands of floss you use will change how it looks as well. One more right in the center. There we go. So they just look like two totally different flowers. They don't look identical at all, which is great. Because flowers don't look identical in the wild. Don't forget that, people. I'm going to risk it and I'm going to, oh, can I risk it? No, that's all the floss I've got left. So I'm going to have to get another cut, which is fine. Give me a chance to move my camera set up as well. So I'm actually going to grab just because it makes sense to me. I'm grabbing one strand and I'm going to actually cut it in half and then fold it in half because that leaves me with three strands which is what I normally cross stitch with. That uh, leaves me with three strands to work with for another project. Plus I don't need a lot. I only need a little bit of the yellow. So now I've got that much instead of that much. So it's perfect. Cool. All right, let's do the last one. Do, do, do. Oop. Sorry about that. Make it bounce all over the place. Okay, now I really can't see what I'm doing. This is a really big flower bit and I can't get the needle through because <sighs> <Squeak, laughs> squeaky squeak. <laughs> All right. Click two, push it in, squeak squeak and then pull it through and then just keep like tugging at it it was being squeaky and left some let over. If you need to cut them out and start again. Like <laughs> French knots do take a lot of practice. Come on. This wrecks my nails when I do that. You probably all notice that my nails are not great, seeing as you see them up close. Sorry, but the camera isn't on YouTube. Oh my gosh, it's done it again. That's so frustrating.
You're okay, Bridget. You don't need to apologize. I hope this doesn't do us tonight, because I want to work tonight. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to have to edit two videos then. I'm very sorry. Can't see. I can't actually see my work. I'm hoping that the... I've done a, a transition change. I'm hoping that the camera will catch up to what I've done. But that's our fourth flower for everyone on Instagram. Oh, there we go. YouTube's back. Sigh. Again, I was doing what I did yesterday and I was paying attention to how I could see it on my camera's viewfinder, not on the computer. Okay, well, I will zoom out for the camera so that you can see what I've done. Well, actually, no, I'll zoom in. I can't zoom in. So, just a quick recap. I've done two on this flower here. Two French knots with two wraps around for this one. For this one, I did five French knots in a little group that all only have one wrap around. And then for this one that I've just done, I did four French knots with two wraps around. I hate to bug you. No, please do. Please bug me. Um, I want it to work. So I would appreciate, I would definitely be appreciative if you're like, Hey, excuse me. Cause I am looking up when I look up, I look at the chat. I don't look at the, um, the, the viewfinder or the shot, like what you see on, on, um, on YouTube. Okay, so that's the yellow. Don't those flowers look freaking cute? I cannot wait to wash this tonight and um, get all those blue marks off it. And then you guys can, and I'll, so just to be clear, I'm going to be washing it. Um, I'm not going to explain how to do that uh, on a stream just because I need to. Uh, have it dry and ironed before tomorrow but I keep meaning to write a blog post about how to wash how I wash my pieces which is actually not that much detail I'll be honest because um, all I do is just wash it in water I don't actually use soap uh, some people do but I'll be talking about that in the post that I write um, but yeah anyway we're going to now move on to these little flowers and for these ones you can either do what I've done for this piece which is use the white again or to kind of tie in the two flower colors you can do what I'm about to do which is use this really light purple which is 3747 again if you are using your own color combination do whatever you like uh, all power to you I do suggest just based on flowers in general that these ones be a really light to almost white color just because of the fact that they're supposed to be dandelions and dandelions only come in that like off white sort of grayish color. Um, but yeah, as I said, do whatever you like, whatever makes you happy, go for it. So again, we're going to use four strands. So I've got a cut here of six strands that you can see. I'm going to pull out two of them to not use, or I'll probably end up using them later. And then, do I have another needle handy? Let's have a look. My stash. I've got this little tin, this magnetic tin of, of needles. And yes, I have all of those needles. Most of them are round tipped needles, though. Okay, we're gonna use this one, which I think is roughly the same size. I'm just sick of the squeaky noise, basically. I'm gonna thread my needle, do a quilter's knot. Ow! 
It's already trying to hurt me. Snip off the tail. And I'll do it really slow again. And we're going to start from the left and work our way across. And same with each flower. I'm going to work. I'm going to start um, at the base and work my way like up and around. But of course, you do it however you like. It's your piece. I'm all for you doing whatever makes you happy. And with this, it's a sort of a similar uh, thing as doing the lazy daisies. The dots that I've given you are just a guide. Feel free to go nuts and do them wherever you like. I think when I actually drew this, I was just like dot, 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 dot. I didn't pay attention to it. So for this one, for this one, you want to make sure that you do every French knot the same size. And I'm just double checking. I did one wrap around. Okay. Um, we want these flowers to all look uniform. So I'm going to go, I'm going to move my phone again so that Instagram can see. So floss in the left hand, needle in the right hand or other way around if you're left handed. I'm going to put my needle underneath my floss, wrap it once, point my needle towards the fabric poke it in where I want the knot to be, which is not the same spot as you came up, like you brought your floss up to. Pull my thread so that my knot is now flush against the fabric, push it through, and fight your needle. Pull it through, don't let go with your left hand until right at the end, and that's it. Isn't that so cute? Guys, I love French knots. I love I love colonial knots better. And I do have a video from my Simply Floral Stitch Along on how to do a colonial knot. They're a little bit trickier, so that's why I didn't include them in this. Because French knots are kind of more well-known as well. Um, so I wanted to make sure that this was beginner-friendly. Uh, and did I just pull that through? No. Okay. And yeah, I wanted to make sure that everyone sort of had the same tools for doing a lot of beginner embroidery patterns. And I didn't want to like say to people, Hey, I'm going to show you this knot that I like better. But you may not understand that you can kind of interchange this knot with a French knot. So, which you can. A colonial knot is just a much symmetrical little circle. It's very, it's compact. Whereas a French knot is, is kind of more like a tiny little rounded triangle. I don't really know why or how, it's just the way that it is. It's because it's like, it's got that bit around this side and then this one sort of tucks in. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it kind of has three sides to it, whereas a colonial knot is this tidy little circle. All right, let me know if you want me to do, if anyone wants me to do it slower again. I'm just conscious of the time. This needle is not squeaky, which is nice. So if you want to make your flower a bit more rounded, like I've just, I've stopped and looked at all of this and there's kind of a gap here. So I'm happy to carry my thread and add a knot. And that'll just sort of round it out a bit more. And then I can just go back, keep going. Okay, so 
So I've dropped my needle on the back side. And this might not look great. Okay, so I'm having to actually pull my needle back up because my floss has tangled. So I'm going to unthread my needle, trying to do it without looking at what I'm doing. Oh, hang on. I think it just fixed itself. No, I didn't. That's okay. All right, so my floss was really tangled. So I'm actually undoing my needle. See, there's, there's the French knot. And what I want to do is before I make that knot really tight, I want to undo it because I'm going to redo that French knot. But before I redo it, I've pulled it out. So now we're back to like the beginning of the French knot. Um, sorry, I know it's blurry for non-Instagram. My camera's having a conniption. Um, there we go. I got it. So now it's all not free. But my, so what just happened there was um, my floss was really tangled. Uh, and I hadn't been able to let it just hang and unwind and so it got tangled like it normally would if you're stitching but with a French knot you're kind of not able to salvage it um, without undoing the whole knot itself see now we're good so yeah I guess that's a good teaching moment Hello, Alana from Mexico City. I'm glad YouTube showed me this video in my recommendations. Awesome. You can, I don't actually think in this description, but you can go back to any of the other videos on my channel on YouTube. Um, except maybe yesterday's, I actually don't think I've updated the description. Um, and there's links to the pattern for this, which is free if you're interested in giving it a go. Well, I was glad I was able to show you guys kind of how to recover from something like that. It's not really something that you want to have happen. So, and plus I didn't really think about deliberately doing it. All right, so that's one flower. I don't want to carry my floss all the way over to this one here, which is this one, this one down here. So I'm going to, um, oh, it's beautiful pattern you make make look easy to do French knots don't worry about tangles it happens all the time yeah <laughs> um, I'll do the French knot again slowly just because I've I've had a couple people um, come and go on Instagram as well so I'm just gonna tie off my thread thank you for the compliment on my pattern I I don't know, I had like a, a special feeling about this pattern when I designed it. I really love it. Which is good, you know, liking your own work is, can be sometimes really hard to, to do. So off camera I'm just doing my quilters knot again. And then I'm going to snip the tails so I don't have to worry about pulling that floss through. Alright, so I'm going to come up off off of where like slightly off where I want the knot to sit and because I want all of these little flowers to be uniform I'm doing a one wrap around French knot so floss in the left hand needle in the right hand because I'm right handed I'm going to come under the floss wrap the floss underneath the needle then so that is one wrap around I'm then going to point the needle towards the fabric and poke into the fabric where I want the, the knot to sit. With my left hand, I'm going to then pull the floss just gently so it slides down the needle and that's telling the floss that I want the knot to sit flush against the fabric. 
and then I'm going to push my needle through. Don't let go with the left hand. Keep pulling it through until I don't have anything left to hold on to. And that's a French knot. And once you've done, you know, quite a few of these, hopefully the motion feels a lot more natural. I know it does for me. Like once I've done a couple on a piece, it's just kind of like second nature. The thing that takes the longest is um, lining up where you want the French knot. Oh, I've got a bit of purple floss. A little straggler from the yesterday. So my floss is trying to tangle again. I'm going to try and let it hang which is hard at the table. There we go. All right, so off slightly where I want the knot to sit. Wrap around once, poke it in, not in the same point of where you came up, but where you want the knot to sit. Pull it through, don't let go until you run out of stuff to let go, to hang on to, and that's it. Sorry if you can hear my husband downstairs. He's having a very energetic meeting, it sounds like. So I'm just tugging my fabric because it started to get a little bit loose. Oops. We don't want loose fabric. Come on. There we go. So the other trick you can try if you so choose to is turning your work slightly um, will make all the French knots not look so uniform. So you can kind of see based on the, the way the light hits it, that all of my French knots kind of face that direction uh, because of how I'm, I'm poking my needle in at, at this point. So I'm always coming in at the top of my thread. So if I was like coming in underneath, uh, for example, this part of the, the knot wouldn't always sit that way. So if I pull it through just slowly, you can see how it like it comes out through the middle and then it's going to sit at the top. So if you rotate your work or if you rotate where you punch your needle back into the fabric, that's going to change your knots slightly as well. Just a little tidbit for you. You don't have to. So some of mine are sideways because I go into the side as well. I'm not going to do that though because I've got mine attached to the table. Alrighty, I flip over my work and tie off my thread again, which is tricky to do. There we go. It makes like a cute little pattern on the back. So I haven't forgotten, I'm going to show you the back of my work uh, at the end of today's session. All right, I'm going to see how many I can do from this last bit of floss. So 
to come up, wrap around once, and go in slightly off of where you came up from, where you actually want the French knot. And so this is a lot more crowded than I remember in the other piece, but it's kind of how it is on the other one. Oh, I went in too close. There we go. We are making good time. I thought this was going to take so much longer but you guys are all very quiet I must have explained it well it's always the hope when you're doing a stitch along sorry my camera is struggling to focus it's because my hands keep getting in the way and it's super twisted so let's just unwind it I just realized that YouTube has done this thing again. And I'm really sorry everyone on YouTube and stuff. Mine are actually coming out. Coming out good, I assume? I hope? Hopefully it's not the dreaded French knot for everybody. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to use the last of this floss on this one flower and I don't have a lot of length left. So I'm just kind of like scraping by a little bit. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Gonna have to edit that YouTube video for sure. And also probably probably update my camera firmware or something. Okay. I had to rethread my needle. that through. There we go. All right, last flower. I'm trying to get my camera to connect again. not going. That's super frustrating. Oh, I turn it off and turn it on again. I jumped over here from YouTube. Yeah, I noticed you, you came over, Bridget. That was what made me check. It's trying to connect again. Yes, I'm stitching along with your pattern. It has had been on my to-do list for a while. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm really sorry that YouTube is being difficult. My camera is no longer connecting to my computer. Which is just not acceptable, camera. Not acceptable. I'm going to have to spend some free time of mine trying to figure it out before my stream tonight. Alright, let's do the rest of this flower while my camera has a conniption. Push it through and pull.
So let me know if you, anyone needs me to go a bit slower. Um, because this is kind of your last chance for me to, to demonstrate it again. Just giving YouTube one last chance. It's not just YouTube, it's also Twitch and Facebook, which is the really frustrating thing. Like it's it's three places. Properties. probably have to do a test stream before tonight. Like it's not even bringing up the properties of the camera on my computer. Anyway. Oh, oh, I think it's working now. Yay, okay. All right, we're back online. So I'm gonna come up off of where I don't I want them not to sit I'm gonna hold it in my left hand needle in my right hand because I'm right-handed wrap around once poke into the fabric not in the same places where I came up but where I want the French knot to sit pull the thread so that I'm telling the floss that I want it to sit against the fabric push my needle through don't let go of my left hand until I run out of stuff to hang on to and that's it but it's frustrating, technology is great and annoying all at once. That is so true. We can't live without it, but we also don't want to live with it sometimes. But my goodness, this last 18 months would have been so isolating if we didn't have it. Because... I don't know about you guys, but you probably have been able to tell that I am not American. However, I do live in America. Uh, but all of my family, except my like immediate family, like my husband and my kids, don't live in America. They live in Australia. So if I didn't have technology, I wouldn't have been able to see them for the last 18 months. Anyway. I'm actually going to do a couple more little French knots on this one because I don't like how sort of sparse it is. I'm going to fill up like these little gaps here. So I'm just going to go back and add a couple more French knots. And that's what I was saying before. If you like, if you look at it and you're like, I don't like that, cut it out, add to it, change it, do whatever you need to. The pattern is just a guideline, not a hard and fast rule about what you should do. I actually think I did the same thing with the test stitch and I just didn't translate it over to the pattern. See, doesn't that look so much better already? Now it actually looks like a little dandelion. There we go, that's better. Excellent! Oh my gosh! Guys, we did all of the stitching. That is all of the stitching. I mean, technically there is a running stitch when we frame it in the hoop, but that's all the important stitching done. <laughs> you did it. You did it, everybody. Give yourselves a pat on the back, a round of applause, pop a party popper, whatever you'd like to do. But you did it. If it's your first embroidery, congratulations. If it's not, congratulations. But that is the pattern. That is everything. We are going to sign it. Actually, no, we'll sign it now. Stuff it. 
we still got a little bit of time. So we'll do signing, which is tiny, and it actually gives you a, a, min, uh, a, a day to think about how you might like to sign it too, which is a good idea. Oh, I have such excellent ideas in the last second. So signing your piece is completely optional, just to start that out first. You do not have to sign your work. I have a blog post on my website that talks about signing work and why I am like all for it. Um, so go check that out if you are so inclined. Uh, but basically, I recommend that you do. And signing it can be however you like. It is like a freehand little addition that you can do. Um, this is how I've signed my piece uh, for the test stitch which is just TLK for two little kits. And then I always stitch the year that the piece was completed in. So it's got little, um, uh, what's the thing? Not hyphen, um, apostrophe 21, uh, because I finished it this year. You can do 2000, or you can do, sorry, you can do 2020 if you want to. Um, some people, a lot of people do their initials, uh, so I used to always do mine, well, before I got married. Um, I, I've, I've been married since I had two little kids, but I would have done um, KJP, KJA if um, I'd done my initials. But yeah, anyway, you do it however you like. I personally suggest that you do a color that is very similar to the fabric so that it doesn't overpower the piece. So I'm gonna use the white that we've done the, these flowers for. And I've just done a knot in the end of my floss. I'm just gonna trim off the end. And then we're just gonna freehand whatever you wanna sign on your piece. So I'm actually gonna grab a pen. This is, another, this is my water soluble pen um, that I used on the very first day. And I'm actually gonna draw two little lines for me to like work from that I'm going to like stitch onto so that's one and then that's the other one and I find that it's a lot easier to make sure that I don't like do really wonky signing when it comes to embroidery cross stitch is like super easy because you've got your grid lined up already but with embroidery it's a little bit trickier so I'm going to come I'm going to first zoom in so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to come up. Oh my god. My phone tripod is just super annoying in the way. So I'm coming up um, for my T at the bottom and then I'm just going to do the little like body of the T. And I'm doing one strand of floss, again using the white that I've already used because I've stitched this on white fabric and it matches the white that it's already like in the piece. And then the L, I want to try and keep it at the same bottom bit. And this will save us from doing this tomorrow should be good we can just focus on framing it in the hoop L and K K is a little bit trickier because how I would write it is like the downstroke and then the the two angles giving you a round of applause for teaching us oh thank you so much so with the K I'm gonna I do the two little angles first I'm actually gonna do that a little bit further away So I'm going to come up and then I'm actually going to go, this is just for the K um, and just an example of one way to do lettering. I'm going to hold the floss out of the way and I'm going to come up where I want the, oop, the down stroke to be and then tack that down. my embroidery T 
teensy letters are never like they're never pretty in my opinion see that's that's my k and then i want to do a tiny little apostrophe because i like to do the shorthand version of the years and then because it's embroidery i can do a curved two so i'm coming up at the start of the two going in like at the start of the curve of the two and i'm going to do like little it's called couching stitches but you can do it how again you can do however you like you don't even have to do this if you don't want to come up not pull too tight have i done that the wrong way around i have okay let's go back out i'm gonna tack that down there and do another one right there and that gives me the little curve of the two and then the bottom so that's my two like I said it's not amazing and then the one and that's it so we signed our piece. We said, I made this, um, I completed this in this year, like this specific year. Um, and yeah, it's it's a signature. Think of when um, painters sign their work. It's exactly the same thing. Um, I highly recommend people do it. It doesn't take up much time. Um, it gives you like a little bit of pride in your work, in my opinion. Uh, and it's so awesome to see in, you know, 10, 15, 20 years when you completed a piece for starters, but also just like, yeah, it's, it's pride in my opinion. I, I, for example, I love looking at my mum's cross stitches um, that she stitched when I was a baby and, and thinking, wow, like seeing the year that's on there and thinking, wow, she made that so long ago and how awesome is it hooray okay i'm gonna move my phone and we're gonna wrap up and oh my gosh it's almost one o'clock which is perfect timing we did it guys and i haven't forgotten i'm gonna show you the back of my work i'm just gonna move everything out of the way so first I'm going to show Instagram, uh, I'm going to show Facebook and stuff because it's already here. So this is the back of my work. So that's what it looks like when you, you trim off. Um, I'm just going to trim these little tails now that I'm remembering. Uh, this is what it looks like when you trim your work. Uh, like you don't carry, that's the one, you don't carry your threads as you go. So it looks messy, but it's so much neater than what it could be. So I'm pretty pleased with that. The B is a crazy mess, but I knew that would always be like that. And so Instagram, this is what it looks like on my back. Which is, <laughs> I just realized because Instagram does the front facing camera in reverse, it actually, you can read the lettering uh, on Instagram, which is kind of funny. Um, and so that's the front and my watch is telling me that it's one o'clock that's the front I'd add a oh can I add a filter I found a filter oh there it is I found a filter on on Facebook that yeah flips the camera so that's what it looks like on the front and it'll look so much better once it's washed um so yay yay so to be clear just to remind you um i am doing one more day i'm going to show you everybody how to finish their piece in their hoop so that it's going to look like this 
I'm going to show you how to make this, how to hide the back of your work if you don't want it to look like this. Because um, not everyone likes a naked back like this or a naked butt, basically. So in between now and tomorrow's stream, I am going to wash my work. I'm going to iron it and I'm going to get a backing piece prepared, which is just a piece of fabric. If you want to do the same thing, by all means, um, you can come, you can, you know, join in with me and, uh, and finish it as well. There is a couple of all my other streams. I've actually shown how to finish my work. If you want to do it now, you can, you can just use the same techniques that I've used in those stitch alongs. Um, it's always the final day that I finish the, the backs of the pieces. So you can go on, on YouTube. Um, it's only on YouTube. So you can, oh no, it's on Instagram as well. You can go back through my IGTV. Um, so Instagram or YouTube, you can see how to back the hoop. But I am going to do it again. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's it. We did it. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's it. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. Actually, no. One more thing. Tomorrow we'll be back to eleven thirty. Uh, today was just an outlier. So, what have what have people said? Beautiful back. Thank you so much. Awesome pattern. Thank you again. So from my name is As Asil. I hope I've pronounced your name properly. And Bridget said my back is not so pretty, but not too bad for my first piece. Congratulations on your first piece so yay all right well i will see everyone tomorrow hopefully and um otherwise yeah i'll, I'll see you on the internet and have a great day bye <laughs>